Dauber John Macefield I four bells were struck, the watch was called on deck, all work aboard was over for the hour, and some men sang and others played at check, or mended clothes or watched the sunset glower. The bursting west was like an opening flower, and one man watched it till the light was dim, but no one went across to talk to him. He was the painter in that swift ship's crew, lampman and painter tall, a slight built man, young for his years, and not yet twenty-two. Sickly, and not yet brown with the sea's tan. Bullied and damned that since the voyage began, Amperson quo. Being neither man nor seaman by his tally, Amperson quo. He bunked with the idlers just abaft the galley. His work began at five. He worked all day, keeping no watch and having all night in. His work was what the mate might care to say. He mixed red lead and many a bouillie tin. His dungarees were smeared with paraffin. Amperson quo. Go drown himself and quo. His round housemates advised him, and all hands called him and quo. Dauber and quo. And despised him. See, the apprentice, stood beside the spar, stripped to the waist, a basin at his side, slushing his hands to get away the tar, and then he washed himself and rinsed and dried. Toweling his face, hair tozeled, eager eyed, he crossed the spar to Dauber and there stood watching the gold of heaven turn to blood. They stood there by the rail while the swift ship tore on out of the tropics, straining her sheets, whitening her trackway to a milky strip, dim with green bubbles and twisted water meats, her clacking tackle tugged at pins and cleats, her great sails bellied stiff, her great mass leaned, they watched how the seas struck and burst and greened. She talked with Dauber, standing by the side. Amperson quo. Why did you come to see, painter? Amperson quo, he said. Amperson quo. I want to be a painter, Amperson quo, he replied, Amperson quo. And know the sea and ships from a to z, and paint great ships at sea before I'm dead. Ships under skisails running down the trade ships in the sea. There's nothing finer made. Amperson quo. But there's so much to learn, with sails and ropes and how the sails look, full or being furled, and how the lights change in the troughs and slopes, and the sea's colors up and down the world, and how a storm looks when the sprays are hurled high as the yard, they say, I want to see. There's none ashore can teach such things to me. Amperson quo. And then the men in rigging, and the way ships move, running or beating, and the poise at the roll's end, the checking in the sway, I want to paint them perfect, short of the noise, and then the life, the half decks full of boys, the faux single quote sees single quote tell yes with the men there, dripping wet, I know the subjects that I want to get. Amperson quo. It's not been done, the sea, not yet been done, from the inside, by one who really knows. I'd give up all if I could be the one, but art comes dear the way the money goes. So I have come to see. And I suppose three years will teach me all I want to learn and make enough to keep me till I earn. Amperson quo. Even as he spoke his busy pencil moved, drawing the leap of water off the side where the great clipper trampled iron hoofed, making the blue hills of the sea divide, shearing a glittering scatter in her stride, and leaping on full tilt with all sails drawing, proud as a war horse, snuffing battle, pawing. Amperson quo. I cannot get it yet not yet. Amperson quo. He said. Amperson quo. That leap in light, and sudden change to green, and all the glittering from the sunset's red, and the milky colors where the bursts have been, and then the clipper striding like a queen over it all, all beauty to the crown. I see it all, I cannot put it down. Amperson quo. It's hard not to be able. There, look there. I cannot get the movement nor the light. Sometimes it almost makes a man despair to try and try and never get it right. Oh, if I could do, oh, if I only might, I wouldn't mind what hells I'd have to pass, not if the whole world called me fool and ass. Down sank the crimson sun into the sea, the wind cut chill at once, the west grew dun. Amperson quo. Outside lights. Amperson quo. Called the mate. Amperson quo. Hi, where is he? Amperson quo. The bosun called, Amperson quo. Outside the lights, damn you. Run. Amperson quo. 
Amperson quo. He's always late or lazing. Amperson quo. Murmured one and quo. The dauber, with his sketching. Amperson quo. Soon the tints of red and green passed on dark water glints. Darker it grew, still darker, and the stars burned golden, and the fiery fishes came. The wire note loudened from the straining spars. The sheet blocks clacked together always the same. The rushing fishes streaked the seas with flame, racing the one speed noble as their own. What unknown joy was in those fish unknown. Just by the roundhouse door, as it grew dark, the bosun caught the dauber with, Amperson quo. Now, you. Till now I've spared you, damn you. Now you hark, I've just had hell for what you didn't do. I'll have you broke and sent among the crew if you get me more trouble by a particle. Don't you forget, you daubing, useless article. Amperson quo. You thing, you twice laid thing from Port Mahan. Then came the cooks and quo. Is that the dauber there? Why don't you leave them stinking paints alone? They stink the house out, poisoning all the air. Just take them out. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Where to? Amperson quo. Amperson quo. I don't care where. I won't have stinking paint here. Amperson quo. From their plates. Amperson quo. That's right. Wet paint breeds fever. Amperson quo. Growled his mates. He took his still wet drawings from the berth and climbed the ladder to the deck house top. Beneath, the noisy half deck rang with mirth, for two ship's boys were putting on the strope. One, clambering up to let the skylight drop, saw him bend down beneath a boat and lay his drawings there, till all were hid away. And stand there silent, leaning on the boat, watching the constellations rise and bum, until the beauty took him by the throat, so stately is their glittering overturn. Armies of marching eyes, armies that yearn with banners rising and falling, and passing by over the empty silence of the sky. The dauber side they're looking at the sails, wind steadied arches leaning on the night, the high trucks traced on heaven and left no trails. The moonlight made the top sails almost white, the passing side light seemed to drip green light. And on the clipper rushed with fire bright boughs. He sighed, Amperson quo. I'll never do single quote he. Amperson quo. And left the house. Amperson quo. Now, Amperson quo. Said the reefer, Amperson quo. Up. Come Sam. Come, see, Dauber's been hiding something. Amperson quo. Up they slid, treading on naked tiptoes stealthily to grope for treasure at the long boat skid. Amperson quo. Drawings. Amperson quo. Said Sam. Amperson quo. Is this what Dauber hid? Lord. I expected pudding, not this rot. Still, come, we'll have some fun with what we've got. Amperson quo. They smeared the paint with turpentine until they could remove with mesclouts every trace of quick perception caught by patient skill, and lines that had brought blood into his face. They wiped the pigments off and did erase, with knives, all sticking clots, when they had done. Under the boat they laid them everyone. All he had drawn since first he came to see, his six weeks leisure fruits, they laid them there. They chuckled then to think how mad he'd be finding his paintings vanished into air. Eight bells were struck, and feet from everywhere went shuffling aft to muster in the dark. The mate's pipe glowed above, a dim red spark. Names in the darkness passed and voices cried. The red spark glowed and died. The faces seemed as things remembered when a brain has died, to all but high intenseness deeply dreamed. Like hissing spears the fish's fire streamed, and on the clipper rushed with tossing mast, a bath of flame broke round her as she passed. The watch was set, the night came, and the men hid from the moon in shadowed nooks to sleep, bunched like the dead, still, like the dead, as when plague in a city leaves none even to weep. The ship's track brightened to a mile broad sweep, the mate there felt her pulse, and eyed the spars, southwest by south she staggered under the stars. Down in his bunk the dauber lay awake thinking of his unfitness for the sea. Each failure, each derision, each mistake, there in the life not made for such as he. A morning grim with trouble sure to be, a noon of pain from failure, 
and a night bitter with men's contemning and despite. This is the first beginning, the green leaf, still in the trades before bad weather fell. What harvest would he reap of hate and grief when the loud horn made every life a hell? When the sick ship lay over, clanging her bell, and no time came for painting or for drawing, but all hands fought, and icy death came clawing? Hell, he expected, hell. His eyes grew blind. The snoring from his messmates droned and snuffled, and then a gush of pity calmed his mind. The cruel torment of his thought was muffled, without, on deck, an old, old, seaman shuffled, humming his song, and through the open door a moonbeam moved and thrust along the floor. The green bunk curtains moved, the brass rings clicked, the cook cursed in his sleep, turning and turning, the moonbeam's moving finger touched and picked, and all the stars in all the sky were burning. Am person quo. This is the art I've come for, and am learning, the sea and ships and men and traveling things. It is most proud, whatever pain it brings. Am person quo. He leaned upon his arm and watched the light sliding and fading to the steady roll. This he would some day paint, the ship at night, and sleeping seamen tired to the soul. The space below the bunks as black as coal, gleams upon chests, upon the unlit lamp, the ranging door hook, and the locker clamp. This he would paint, and that, and all these scenes, and proud ships carrying on, and mend their minds, and blues of rollers toppling into greens, and shattering into white that bursts and blinds, and scattering ships running erect like hinds and men in oil skins beating down a sail high on the yellow yard, in snow, in hail. With faces ducked down from the slanting drive of half-thawed hail mixed with half-frozen spray, the roaring canvas like a thing alive, shaking the mast, knocking their hands away, the foot ropes jerking to the tug and sway, the savage eyes all reddened at the rims, and icicles on the southwester brims. And soonier scenes would grow under his brush, the tropic dawn with all things dropping dew, the darkness and the wonder and the hush, the insensate gray before the marvel grew. Then the veil lifted from the trembling blue, the walls of sky burst in, the flower, the rose, all the expanse of heaven a mind that glows. He turned out of his bunk. The cook still tossed, one of the other two spoke in his sleep. A cockroach scuttle where the moonbeam crossed. Outside there was the ship, the night, the deep. Am person quo. It is worthwhile. Am person quo. The youth said. Am person quo. I will keep to my resolve, I'll learn to paint all this. My lord, my god, how beautiful it is. Am person quo. Outside was the ship's rush to the wind's hurry, a resonant wire hummed from every rope, the broadening bow washed in a fiery flurry, the leaning mass in their majestic slope, and all things strange with moonlight, filled with hope by all that beauty going as man bade. He turned and slept in peace. Eight bells were made. Two next day was Sunday, his free painting day, while the fine weather held, from eight till eight. He rose when called at five, and did array the roundhouse gear, and set the key bags straight. Then kneeling down, like housemaid at a grade, he scrubbed the deck with sand until his knees were blue with dye from his wet dungarees. Soon all was clean, his Sunday tasks were done. His day was clear for painting as he chose. The wetter decks were drying in the sun, the men coiled up, or swabbed, or sought repose. The drifts of silver arrows fell and rose as flying fish took wing. The breakfast passed, wasting good time, but he was free at last. Free for two hours and more to tingle deep, catching a likeness in a line or tint, the canvas running up in a proud sweep, wind wrinkled at the clues, and white like lind. The glittering of the blue waves into glint. Free to attempt it all, the proud ship's pawings, the sea, the sky he went to fetch his drawings. Up to the deck house top he quickly climbed, he stooped to find them underneath the boat. He found them all obliterated, slimed, blotted, erased, gone from him line and note. They were all spoiled, a lump came in his throat, being vain of his attempts, and tender skin beneath the skylight watching reefers grinned. He clambered down, holding the ruined things. Am person quo. Bosun, am person quo. He called, am person quo. Look here, did you do these, wipe off my paints and cut them into strings, 
and smear them till you can't tell chalk from cheese? Don't stare, but did you do it? Answer, please. Amperson quo. The bosun turned, Amperson quo. I'll give you a thick ear. Do it. I didn't. Get to hell from here. Amperson quo. I touch your stinking daubs. The dauber's deft. Amperson quo. A crowd was gathering now to hear the fun. The reefers tumbled out, the men laid aft, the cook blinked, cleaning a mess kid in the sun. Amperson quo. What's up with Dauber now? Amperson quo. Said everyone. Amperson quo. Someone has spoiled my drawings look at this. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Well, that's a dirty trick, by God, it is. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. It is, Amperson quo. Said Sam, Amperson quo. A low-down dirty trick, to spoil a feller's work in such a way, and if you catch him, Dauber, punch him sick, for he deserves it, be he who he may. Amperson quo. A seaman shook his old head wise and gray. Amperson quo. It seems to me, Amperson quo. He said, Amperson quo. Who ain't no judge? Them drawings look much better now they're smudge. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Where were they, Dauber? On the deck house? Where? Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Under the longboat, in a secret place. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. The blackguard must have seen you put them there. He is a swine. I tell him to his face, I didn't think we'd anyone so base. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Nor I, Amperson quo. Said Dauber. Amperson quo. There was six weeks time just wasted in these drawings, it's a crime. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Well, don't you say we did it, Amperson quo. Growled his mates, Amperson quo. And as for crime, be damned. The things were smears best overboard, like you with shot for weights? Thank God they're gone, and now go shake your ears. Amperson quo. The Dauber listened, very near to tears. Amperson quo. Dauber, if I were you, Amperson quo. Said Sam again, Amperson quo. I daft, and see the captain and complain. Amperson quo. A sigh came from the assembled seamen there. Would he be such a fool for their delight as go to tell the captain? Would he dare? And would the thunder roar, the lightning smite? There was the captain come to take a sight, handling his sextant by the chart house aft. The Dauber turned, the seaman thought him deft. The captain took his sights and mate below noted the times. They shouted to each other, the captain quick with and quo. Stop, Amperson quo. The answer slow, repeating slowly one height than another. The swooping clipper stumbled through the smother. The ladder brasses in the sunlight burned, the Dauber waited till the captain turned. There stood the Dauber, humbled to the bone, waiting to speak. The captain let him wait, glanced at the course, and called in even tone, Amperson quo. What is the man there wanting, Mr. Mate? The log ship clattered on the grating straight, the reel rolled to the scuppers with a clatter, the mate came grim, Amperson quo. Well, Dauber, what's the matter? Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Please, sir, they spoiled my drawings. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Who did? Amperson quo. Amperson quo. They. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Who's they? Amperson quo. Amperson quo. I don't quite know, sir. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Don't quite know, sir. Then why are you have to talk about it, hey? Whom do you complain of? Amperson quo. Amperson quo. No one. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. No one? Amperson quo. Amperson quo. No, sir. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Well, then, go forward till you've found them. Go, sir. If you complain of someone, then I'll see. Now get to hell. And don't come bothering me.
Ampersand quo. Ampersand quo. But, sir, they washed them off, and some they cut. Look here, sir, how they spoiled them. Ampersand quo. Ampersand quo. Never mind. Go shove your head inside the scuttle but, and that will make you cooler. You will find nothing like water when you're mad and blind. Where were the drawings? In your chest, or where? Ampersand quo. Ampersand quo. Under the longboat, sir. I put them there. Ampersand quo. Ampersand quo. Under the longboat, hey? Now mind your tip. I'll have the skids kept clear with nothing round them. The longboat ain't a star in this here ship. Lucky for you it wasn't I who found them. If I had seen them, Dauber, I'd have drowned them. Now you be warned by this. I tell you plain, don't stow your brass rags under boats again. Amperson quo. Go forward to your berth. Amperson quo. The Dauber turned. The listeners down below them winked and smiled, knowing how red the Dauber's temples burned, having lost the case about his only child. His work was done to nothing and defiled, and there was no redress, the captain's voice spoke, and called and quo. Painter, Amperson quo. Making him rejoice. The captain and the maid conversed together. Amperson quo. Drawings, you tell me, mister? Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Yes, sir. Views, wiped off with terps, I gather that's his blether. He says they were things he can't afford to lose. He stick, who came to see in dancing shoes, and found the dancer bear dance. They were hidden under the long boat's chocks, which I've forbidden. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Wiped off with terps. Amperson quo. The captain sucked his lip. Amperson quo. Who did it, mister? Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Reefers, I suppose. Them devils do the most pranks in a ship. The roundhouse might have done it, cook or bows. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. I can't take notice of it till he knows. How does he do his work? Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Well, no offense. He tries. He does his best. He's got no sense. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Painter, Amperson quo. The captain called. The Dauber came. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. What's all this talk of drawings? What's the matter? Amperson quo. Amperson quo. They spoiled my drawings, sir. Amperson quo. Well, who's to blame? The long boat's there for no one to get at her. You broke the rules, and if you choose to scatter gear up and down where it's no right to be, and suffer as result, don't come to me. Amperson quo. Your place is in the roundhouse, and your gear belongs where you belong. Who spoiled your things? Find out who spoiled your things and fetch him here. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. But, sir, they cut the canvas into strings. Amperson quo. I want no argument nor questionings. Go back where you belong and say no more, and please remember that you're not on shore. Amperson quo. The Dalbert touched his brow and slunk away, they eyed his going with a bitter eye. Amperson quo. Dauber, Amperson quo. Said Sam, Amperson quo. What did the captain say? Amperson quo. The Dalbert drooped his head without reply. Amperson quo. Go forward, Dauber, and enjoy your cry. Amperson quo. The mate limped to the rail. Like little feet over his head the drumming reef points beat. The Dauber reached the berth and entered in. Much mockery followed after as he went, and each face seemed to greet him with the grin of hounds hot following on a creature spent. Amperson quo. Aren't you a fool? Amperson quo. Each mocking visage meant. Amperson quo. Who did it, Dauber? What did Captain say? It is a crime, and there'll be hell to pay. Amperson quo. He bowed his head, the house was full of smoke. The sails was pointing shackies on his chest. Amperson quo. Lord, Dauber, be a man and take a joke and quo. He puffed his pipe. Amperson quo. 
and let the matter rest. Spit brown, my son, and get a hairy breast. Get shoulders on you at the Krojic braces, and let this painting business go to blazes. And person quo. What good can painting do to anyone? I don't say never do it. Far from that, no harm in sometimes painting just for fun. Keep it for fun, and stick to what you're at. Your job's to fill your bones up and get fat. Rib up like Barney's bull, and fake your neck. Throw paints to hell, boy. You belong on deck. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. That's right, Amperson quo. Said Chips. Amperson quo. It's downright good advice. Painting's no good. What good can painting do up on a lower top sail stiff with ice, with all your little fish hooks frozen blue? Painting won't help you at the weather clue, nor pass your gaskets for you, nor make sail. Painting's a bummy job not worth a nail. Amperson quo. The Dauber did not answer. Time was passing. He pulled his easel out, his paints, his stool. The wind was dropping, and the sea was glassing new realms of beauty waited for his rule. The draughts out of the Krojic kept him cool. He sat to paint, alone and melancholy. Amperson quo. No turning fools, Amperson quo. The trips said, Amperson quo. From their folly, Amperson quo. He dipped his brush and tried to fix a line and then came peace, and gentle beauty came, turning his spirit's water into wine, lightening his darkness with a touch of flame, oh, joy of trying for beauty, ever the same, you never fail, your comforts never end, oh, balm of this world's way, oh, perfect friend. 3 They lost the trade soon after. Then came calm, light little gusts and rain which soon increased to glorious northers shouting out a psalm at seeing the bright blue water silver fleeced. Homewards she rushed, trampling the seas to east. There fell a rain squall in a blind day's end, when for an hour the Dauber found a friend. Out of the rain the voices called and passed, the stay sails flogged, the tackle yanked and shook. Inside the harness room a lantern cast light and wild shadows as it ranged its hook. The watch on deck was gathered in the nook, they had taken shelter in that secret place, wild light gave wild emotions to each face. One beat the beef cask, and the other sang a song that had brought anchors out of seas and ports where bells of Christians never rang, nor any sea mark blazed among the trees. By forlorn swamps, in ice, by windy keys, that song had sounded. Now it shook the air from these eight wanderers brought together there. Under the poop break, sheltering from the rain. The Dalber sketched some likeness of the room, a note to be a prompting to his brain, a spark to make old memory reillume. Dalber, Amperson quo, said someone near him in the gloom, Amperson quo. How goes it, Dalber? Amperson quo. It was re for C. Amperson quo. There's not much use in trying to keep dry. Amperson quo. They sat upon the sail room doorway combing, the lad held forth like youth. The Dalber listened to how the boy had had a taste for roaming, and what the sea is said to be and isn't. Where the dim lamplight fell the wet deck glistened. I said the horn was still some weeks away, Amperson quo. But tell me, Dalber, where'd you hail from? Eh? Amperson quo. The rain blew past and let the stars appear. The seas grew larger as the moonlight grew. For half an hour the ring of heaven was clear, dusty with moonlight gray rather than blue. In that great moon the showing stars were few. The sleepy time boy's feet passed overhead. Amperson quo. I come from out past Gloucester, Amperson quo. Dauber said. Amperson quo. Not far from Pontley, if you know those parts. The place is Spittle Farm, near Silver Hill, above a trap hatch where a mill stream starts. We had the mill once, but we've stopped the mill. My dad and sister keep the farm on still. We're only tenants, but we've rented there, father and son, for over eighty year. Amperson quo. Father has worked the farm since Grant for went. It means the world to him. I can't think why. They bleed him to the last half crown for rent, and this and that have almost milked him dry. The land's all starved. If he'd put money by, and corn was up, and rent was down two-thirds. But then they aren't, 
So what's the use of words? Amperson quo. Yet still he couldn't bear to see it pass to strangers, or to think a time would come when other men than us would mow the grass, and other names than ours have the home. Some sorrows come from evil thought, but some comes when two men are near, and both are blind to what is generous in the other's mind. Amperson quo. I was the only boy, and father thought at farm the spittal after he was dead, and many a time he took me out and taught about manures and seed corn white and red, and soils and hops, but I'd an empty head. Harvest our seed, I would not do a turn, I loathed the farm, I didn't want to learn. Amperson quo. He did not mind at first, he thought it youth feeling the color, and that I should change. Then time gave him some inklings of the truth, and that I loathed the farm, and wished to range. Truth to a man of fifties always strange. It was most strange and terrible to him that I, his heir, should be the devil's limb. Amperson quo. Yet still he hoped the Lord might change my mind. I'd see him bridle in his wrath and hate, and almost break my heart he was so kind, biting his lips sore with resolve to wait. And then I'd try a while. But it was fate, I didn't want to learn. The farm to me was mire and hopeless work and misery. Amperson quo. Though there were things I loved about it, too, the beasts, the apple trees, and going haying. And then I tried. But no, it wouldn't do, the farm was prison, and my thoughts were straying. And there'd come father, with his gray head, praying, Oh, my dear son, don't let the spittle pass. It's my old home, boy, where your grandfather was. Amperson quo. And now you won't learn farming. You don't care the old home's not to you. I've tried to teach you. Begged Almighty God, boy, all I dare, to use his hand if word of mine won't reach you. Boy, for your grandfather's sake I do beseech you, don't let the spittle pass to strangers. Squire has said he'd give it you if we require. Amperson quo. Your mother used to walk here, boy, with me. It was her favorite walk down to the mill. And there we'd talk how little death would be, knowing our work was going on here still. You've got the brains, you only want the will, don't disappoint your mother and your father. I'll give you time to travel, if you'd rather. Amperson quo. But, no, I'd wander up the brooks to read. Then Sister Jane would start with nagging tongue, saying my sin made father's heart to bleed, and how she feared she'd live to see me hung. And then she dread me bits from Dr. Young. And when we three would sit to supper, Jane would fill up that till Dad began again. Amperson quo. I've been here all my life, boy. I was born up in the room above looks on the mead. I never thought you'd cockle my clean corn, and lead the old home to a stranger's seed. Father and I have made here thout a wheat, we've give our lives to make that. Eighty years. And now I go down to the grave in tears. Amperson quo. And then I'd get ashamed and take off coat, and work maybe a week, plowing and sewing, and then I'd creep away and sail my boat, or watch the water when the mill was going. That's my delight to be near water flowing, dabbling or sailing boats or jumping stanks, or finding more huns' nests along the banks. Amperson quo. And one day father found a ship I'd built. He took the cart whip to me over that, and I, half mad with pain, and sick with guilt, went up and hid in what we called the flat, a dusty hole given over to the cat. She kittened there. The kittens had worn paths among the cobwebs, dust, and broken laths. Amperson quo. And putting down my hand between the beams I felt a leathery thing, and pulled it clear, a book with white cocoon stuck in the seams. Where spiders had had nests for many a year. It was my mother's sketchbook. Hid, I fear lest dad should ever see it. Mother's life was not her own while she was father's wife. Amperson quo. There were her drawings dated, penciled faint. March was the last one, 1883, and finished that, for tears had smeared the paint. The rest was landscape, not yet brought to be. That was a holy afternoon to me. That book a sacred book. The flat a place where I could meet my mother face to face. Amperson quo. She had found peace of spirit, mother had, drawing the landscape from the attic their heart broke in, often, after rose with dad, hid like a wild thing in a secret lair. 
that rotting sketchbook showed me how and where I, too, could get away. And then I knew that drawing was the work I longed to do. Drawing became my life, I drew, I toiled, and every penny I could get I spent on paints and artists' matters, which I spoiled up in the attic to my heart's content, till one day father asked me what I meant. The time had come, he said, to make an end. Now it must finish. What did I intend? Either I took to farming, like his son, in which case he would teach me, early and late, provided that my dobbing mood was done, or I must go. It must be settled straight. If I refused to farm, there was the gate. I was to choose, his patience was all gone, the present state of things could not go on. Amperson quo. Sister was there. She eyed me while he spoke. The kitchen clock ran down and struck the hour, and something told me father's heart was broke, for Ollie stood so set and looked so sour. Jane took a duster, and began to scour a pewter on the dresser. She was crying. I stood stock still a long time, not replying. Amperson quo. Dad waited, then he snorted and turned round. Well, think of it, Vash, he said. He left the room. His boots went clip along the stony ground out to the orchard and the apple bloom. A cloud came past the sun and made a gloom. I swallowed with dry lips, then sister turned. She was dead white but for her eyes that burned. Amperson quo. You're breaking father's heart, Joe, she began. It's not as if, dash. She checked, in too much pain. Oh, Joe, don't help to kill so fine a man. You're giving him our mother over again. It's wearing him to death, Joe, heart and brain. You know what store he sets on leaving this to. It's too cruel to a son of his. Amperson quo. Yet you go painting all the day. Oh, Joe, couldn't you make an effort? Can't you see what folly it is of yours? It's not as though you are a genius or could ever be. Oh, Joe, for father's sake, if not for me, give up this craze for painting and be wise and work with father, where your duty lies. Amperson quo. It goes too deep, I said. I loathe the farm. I couldn't help, even if I'd the mind. Even if I helped, I'd only do him harm. Father would see it, if he were not blind. I was not built to farm, as he would find. Oh, Jane, it's bitter hard to stand alone and spoil my father's life or spoil my own. Amperson quo. Spoil both, she said, the way you're shaping now. You're only a boy not knowing your own good. Where will you go, suppose you leave here? How do you propose to earn your daily food? Draw. Daub the pavements? There's a freckless brood goes to the devil daily, Joe, in cities only from thinking how divine their wit is. Amperson quo. Clouds are they, without water, carried away. And you'll be one of them. The way you're going, daubing at silly pictures all the day, and praised by silly fools who're always blowing. And you choose this when you might go a sowing, casting the good corn into chosen mold that shall in time bring forth a hundredfold. Amperson quo. So we went on, but in the end it ended. I felt I'd done a murder. I felt sick. There's much in human minds cannot be mended, and that, not I, played that a cruel trick. There was one mercy that it ended quick. I went to join my mother's brother, he lived down the Severn. He was kind to me. Amperson quo. And there I learned house painting for a living. I'd have been happy there, but that I knew I'd sinned before my father passed forgiving, and that they sat at home, that silent too, wearing the fire out in the evening through, silent, defeated, broken, in despair, my plate unset, my name gone, and my chair. Amperson quo. I saw all that. And Sister Jane came white white as a ghost, with fiery, weeping eyes. I saw her all day long and half the night, bitter as gall, and passionate and wise. Joe, you have killed your father, there he lies. You have done your work you with our mother's ways. She said it plain, and then her eyes would blaze. Amperson quo. And then one day I had a job to do down below bridge. By where the docks begin, and there I saw a clipper towing through, up from the sea that morning, entering in. Right to the ninth she was, lofty and thin, her ensign ruffling red, her bunts in pile, 
beauty and strength together, wonder, style. Ampersand quo. She docked close to the gates, and there she lay over the water from me, well in sight. And as I worked I watched her all the day, finding her beauty ever freshly light. Her house flag was bright green with strips of white. High in the sunny air it rose to shake above the skisail pole's most splendid rake. Ampersand quo. And when I felt unhappy I would look over the river at her. And her pride, so calm, so quiet, came as a rebuke to half the passionate pathways which I tried, and though the autumn ran its term and died, and winter fell and cold December came, she was still splendid there, and still the same. Ampersand quo. Then on a day she sailed. But when she went my mind was clear on what I had to try, to see the sea and ships, and what they meant, that was the thing I longed to do. So I drew and worked hard, and studied and put by, and thought of nothing else but that one end, but let all else go hang, love, money, friend. Ampersand quo. And now I've shipped as Delber I've begun. It was hard work to find a Delber's berth. I hadn't any friends to find me one, only my skill, for what it may be worth. But I'm at sea now, going about the earth, and when the ship's paid off, when we return, I'll join some Paris studio and learn. Ampersand quo. He stopped, the air came moist, C did not speak. The Delber turned his eyes to where he sat, pressing the sailroom hinges with his cheek, his face half covered with a dropping hat. Huge dewdrops from the stay sails dropped and spat. C did not stir, the Dalbert touched his sleeve. A little bird-like noise came from a sheave. C was asleep, sleeping a calm deep sleep, still as a warden of the Egyptian dead in some old haunted temple buried deep under the desert sand, sterile and red. The Dalbert shook his arm. C jumped and said, Amperson quo. Good yarn, I swear. I say. You have a brain was the eight bells that went? Amperson quo. He slept again. Then waking up, Amperson quo. I've had a nap, Amperson quo. He cried. Amperson quo. Was that one bell? What, Dauber, you still here? Amperson quo. Amperson quo. See there? Amperson quo. The maid's voice called. Amperson quo. Sir? Amperson quo. He replied. The order made the lad's thick vision clear. A something in the maid's voice made him fear. Amperson quo. See, Amperson quo. Said the mate. Amperson quo. I hear you've made a friend, Dauber, in short. That friendship's got to end. Amperson quo. You're a young gentleman. Your place aboard is with the gentleman abaft the mast. You're learning to command. You can't afford to yam with any man. But there. It's past. You've done it once. Let this time be the last. The Dauber's place is forward. Do it again, I'll put you bunking forward with the men. Amperson quo. Dismiss. Amperson quo. She went, but Sam, beside the mate, Tim Keeper there, walked with him to the rail and whispered him the menace of and quo. You wait and quo. Words which have turned full many a reefer pale. The watch was changed. The watch on deck trimmed sail Sam, going below, called all the reefers down, sat in his bunk and eyed them with a frown. Amperson quo. See here, Amperson quo. He said, Amperson quo. Has soiled the half deck's name talking to Dauber Dauber, the ship's clout. A reefer takes the Dauber for a flame, the half deck take the roundhouse walking out. He soiled the half deck's honor. Now, no doubt, the bosun and his mates will come here sneaking, asking for smokes, or blocking gangways speaking. Amperson quo. I'm not a vain man, given to blow or boast. I'm not a proud man, but I truly feel that while I've bossed this mess and ruled this rose, I've kept this hooker's half deck damn genteel. See, must ask pardon, or be made to squeal. Down on your knees, dog. Then we love we chasten. Chow, Pasia, my son in English, hasten. Amperson quo. C begged for pardon, meekly kneeling down before the reefers mess assembled grim. The lamp above them smoked the glass all brown. Beyond the door the dripping sails were dim. The Dauber passed the door. None spoke to him. 
he sought his berth and slept, or, waking, heard rain on the deck house rain, no other word. For out of the air a time of quiet came, calm fell upon the heaven like a drought. The brass sky watched the brassy water flame. Drowsed as a snail the clipper loitered south slowly, with no white bone across her mouth. No rushing glory, like a queen made bold, the Dalbris drove to draw her as she rolled. There the four leaning spires of canvas rose, royals and skissails lifting, gently lifting, white like the brightness that a great fish blows, when billows are a piece and ships are drifting. With mighty jerks that set the shadows shifting, the courses tug their tethers, a blue haze drifted like ghosts of flocks come down to graze. There the great skyline made her perfect round, notch now and then by the sea's deeper blue. A smoke's much marked a steamer homeward bound, the haze wrought all things to intense a hue. In tingling impotence the dauber drew as all men draw keen to the shaken soul to give a hint that might suggest the whole. A naked seaman washing a red shirt sat at a tub whistling between his teeth. Complaining blocks quavered like something hurt. A sailor cut an old boot for a sheath, the ship bowed to her shadow ship beneath, and little splash of spray came at the roll onto the deck planks from the scupper hole. He watched it, painting patiently, as paints, with eyes that pierced behind the blue sky's veil, the Benedictine and a book of saints watching the passing of the Holy Grail. The green dish dripping blood, the trump, the hail, the spears that pass, the memory and the passion, the beauty moving under this world's fashion. But as he painted, slowly, man by man, the seamen gathered near. The bosun stood behind him, jeering. Then the sails began sniggering with comment that it was not good. Trips flicked his sketch with little scraps of wood, saying, Amperson quo. That hit the top knot, Amperson quo. Every time. Cook mocked, Amperson quo. My lovely drawings. It's a crime. Amperson quo. Slowly the men came nearer, till a crowd stood at his elbow, muttering as he drew. The boatswain, turning to them, spoke aloud, Amperson quo. This is the ship that never got there. You look at her here, what Dauber's trying to do. Look at her. Lummy, like a Christmas tree. That thing's a ship. He calls this painting. See? Amperson quo. Seeing the crowd, the mate came forward. Then sir, Amperson quo. Said the boatswain, Amperson quo. Come and see the sight. Here's Dauber makes a circus for the men. He calls this thing a ship this hell's delight. Amperson quo. Man, Amperson quo. Said the mate, Amperson quo. You'll never get her right daubing like that. Look here. Amperson quo. He took a brush Amperson quo. Now Dauber, watch. I'll put you to the blush. Amperson quo. Look here. Look there. Now watch this ship of mine. Amperson quo. He drew her swiftly from a memory stored. Amperson quo. God, sir, the boatswain said, Amperson quo. You do her fine. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. A, Amperson quo. Said the mate, Amperson quo. I do so. By the Lord. I'll paint a ship with any man aboard. Amperson quo. They hung about his sketch like beasts at bait. Amperson quo. There now, I taught him painting. Amperson quo. Said the mate. When he had gone, the gathered men dispersed. Yet two or three still lingered to dispute what errors made the Dauber's work the worst. They probed his want of knowledge to the root. Amperson quo. Begotta and quo. They swore, Amperson quo. The Dauber cannot do single quote he half known a lick how to put der pence. Der mates is good. The Dauber half no sense. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. You hear? Amperson quo. The boatswain cried, Amperson quo. You cannot do it. Amperson quo. A gospel truth, Amperson quo. The cook said, Amperson quo. True as hell. And wisdom, Dauber, if you only knew it. A five-year boy would do a ship as well. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. If that's the kind of thing you hope to sell, God help you, Amperson quo. 
Echo chips. Amperson quo. I tell you true, the job's beyond you, Dauber. Drop it, do. Amperson quo. Drop it, in God's name drop it, and have done. You see you cannot do it. Here's the mate paints you to frazzles before everyone. Paints you a dandy clipper while you wait. While you, Lord love us, daub. I tell you straight we've had enough of daubing. Drop it. Quit. You cannot paint, so make an end of it. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. That sense, Amperson quo. Said all. Amperson quo. You cannot, why pretend? Amperson quo. The Dauber rose and put his easel by. Amperson quo. You've said enough, Amperson quo. He said, Amperson quo. Now let it end. Who cares how bad my painting may be? I mean to go on, and, if I fail, to try. However much I miss of my intent, if I have done my best I'll be content. Amperson quo. You cannot understand that. Let it be. You cannot understand, nor know, nor share. This is a matter touching only me. My sketch may be a dub, for aught I care. You may be right. But even if you were, your mocking should not stop this work of mine. Rot though it be, its prompting is divine. Amperson quo. You cannot understand that you, and you, and you, you bosun. You can stand and jeer, that is the task your spirit fits you to, that you can understand and hold most dear. Grin, then, like collars, ear to donkey ear, but let me daub. Try, you, to understand which task will bear the light best on God's hand. Amperson quo. V. The wester came as steady as the trades. Brightly it blew, and still the ship did shoulder the brilliance of the water's white cockades into the milky green of smoky smolder. The sky grew bluer and the air grew colder. Southward she thundered while the westers held, proud, with taut bridles, pawing, but compelled. And still the dauber strove, though all men mocked, to draw the splendor of the passing thing and deep inside his heart a something locked, long pricking in him, now began to sting a fear of the disaster's storm might bring. His rank as painter would be ended then, he would keep watch and watch like other men, and go aloft with them to man the yard when the gray ship was rolling scuppers under, burying her snout all round the compass card, while the green water struck at her and stunned her. When the leeriging slacked, when one long thunder boomed from the black to windward, when the sail booted and spurred the devil in the gale. For him to ride on men, that was the time the Dauber dreaded. Then lest the test would come, when seas, half frozen, slushed the decks with slime, and all the air was blind with flying scum. When the drenched sails were furled, when fierce hum and weather riggings died into the roar of God's eternal never tamed by shore. Once in the passage he had worked aloft, shifting her suits one summer afternoon, in the bright trade wind when the wind was soft, shaking the points, making the tackle croon. But that was child's play to the future, soon he would be ordered up when sails and spars were flying and going mad among the stars. He had been scared that first time, daunted, thrilled, not by the height so much as by the size, and then the danger to the man unskilled in standing on a rope that runs through eyes. Amperson quo. But in a storm, Amperson quo. He thought, Amperson quo. The yards will rise and roll together down, and snap their gear. Amperson quo. The sweat came cold upon his palms for fear. Sometimes. In Gloucester they had felt a pang swinging below the house eaves on a stage. But stages carry rails. Here he would hang upon the jerking rope in a storm's rage, duck that the sheltering oil skin might assuage the beating of the storm, clutching the jack, beating the sail, and being beaten back. Drenched, frozen, gasping, blinded, beaten dumb, high in the night, reeling great blinding arcs as the ship rolled, his chappy fingers numb, the deck below a narrow blur of marks, the sea a welter of whiteness shot with sparks, now snapping up and bursts, now dying away, salting the horizontal snow with spray. A hundred and fifty feet above the deck, and there, while the ship rolls, boldly to sit upon a foot rope moving, jerk and check, while half a dozen seamen work on it. Held by one hand, straining, 
by strength and wit to toss a gasket's coil around the yard. How could he compass that when blowing hard? And if he failed in any least degree, or faltered for an instant, or showed slack, he might go drown himself within the sea, and add a bubble to the clipper's track. He had signed his name, there was no turning back, no pardon for default this must be done. One iron rule at sea binds everyone. Till now he had been treated with contempt as neither man nor a thing, a creature born on the ship's articles, but left exempt from all the seamen's life except their scorn. But he would rank as seaman off the horn, work as a seaman, and be kept or cast by standards set for men before the mast. Even now they shifted suits of sails. They bent the storm suit ready for the expected time. The mighty wester that the plate had lent had brought them far into the wintry clime. At dawn, out of the shadow, there was rim, the dim Magellan clouds were frosty clear, the wind had edge, the testing time was near. And then he wondered if the tales were lies told by old hands to terrify the new, for, since the ship left England, only twice had there been need to start a sheet or clue, then only royals, for an hour or two, and no seas broke aboard, nor was it cold. What were these gales of which the stories told? The thought went by. He had heard the boatswain tell too often, and too fiercely, not to know that being off the horn and doon is hell, hell of continual toil in ice and snow, frostbitten hell in which the westers blow shrieking for days on end, in which the seas gulf the starved seamen till their marrows freeze. Such was the weather he might look to find, such was the work expected, there remained firmly to set his teeth, resolve his mind, and be the first, however much it pained and bring his honor round the horn unstained, and win his mate's respect, and hence, untinted, be ranked as man however much he painted. He drew deep breath. A gaunt line swayed aloft a lower top sail, hard with rope and leather, such as men's frozen fingers fight with oft below the Ramirez and Cape home weather. The arms upon the yard hove all together, lighting the head along. A thought occurred within the painter's brain like a bright bird, that this, and so much like it, of man's toil, compassed by naked manhood in strange places, was all heroic, but outside the coil within which modem are gleams or grimaces. That if he drew that line of sailors' faces sweating the sail, their passionate play and change, it would be new, and wonderful, and strange. That that was what his work meant. It would be a training in new vision a revealing of passionate men in battle with the sea, high on an unseen stage, shaking and reeling and men through him would understand their feeling, their might, their misery, their tragic power, and all by suffering pain a little hour. High on the yard with them, feeling their pain, battling with them. And it had not been done. He was a door to new worlds in the brain, a window opening letting in the sun, a voice saying, Am person quo. Thus is bread fetched and ports won, and life lived out at sea where men exist solely by man's strong brain and sturdy wrist. Amperson quo. So he decided, as he cleaned his brasses, hearing without, aloft, the curse, the shout where the taut gaunt line passes and repasses, heaving new top sails to be lighted out. It was most proud, however self might doubt, to share man's tragic toll and pain at true. He took the offered fate, this he would do. That night the snow fell between six and seven, a little feathery fall so light, so dry, a nameless dust out of the confused heaven, upon an air no steadier than a sigh. The powder dusted down and wandered by so purposeless, so many, and so cold, then died, and the wind ceased and the ship rolled. Rolled till she clenched, rolled till the brain was tired, marking the acme of the heaves, the pause while the sea beauty rested and respired, drinking great draughts of roller at her house. Flutters of snow came aimless upon floors. Lock up your paints. Amperson quo. The maid said, speaking light, Amperson quo. This is the horn. You'll join my watch tonight. Amperson quo. Six all through the windless night the clipper rolled in a great swell with oily gradual heaves which rolled her down until her time bells tolled, clang, and the weltering water moaned like beeves. The thundering rattle of sliding shook the sheaves, startles of water made the swing ports gush. The sea was moaning and sighing and saying and quo. Hush. Amperson quo. It was all black and starless. Peering down into the water, trying to pierce the gloom, 
one saw dim, smooth, oily glitter of brown heaving and dying away and leaving room for yet another. Like the march of doom came those great powers of marching silences. Then foe came down. Dead cold, and hid the seas. They set the dauber to the foghorn. There he stood upon the poop, making to sound out of the pump the sailor's nasal blare, listening lest ice should make the note resound. She bayed there like a solitary hound lost in a covert. All the watch she bayed. The fog, come close earlier down, no answer made. Then Srid grew, until the ship was lost. The elemental hid her. She was merged in mufflings of dark death, like a man's ghost, new to the change of death, yet thither urged. Then from the hidden waters something surged more in full, despairing, great, greater than speech, a noise like one slow wave on a still beach. More in full, and then again more in full, and still out of the night that mighty voice arose. The dauber at his foghorn felt the thrill. Who rode that desolate sea? What forms were those? More in full, from things defeated, in the throes of memory of some conquered hunting ground, out of the night of death arose the sound. Amperson quo. Wales. Amperson quo. Said the mate. They stayed there all night long answering the horn. Out of the night they spoke, defeated creatures who had suffered wrong, but were still noble underneath the stroke. They filled the darkness when the dauber woke. The men came peering to the rail to hear, and the sea sighed, and the fog rose up sheer. A wall of nothing at the world's last edge, where no life came except defeated life. The Dauber felt shut in within a hedge, behind which form was hidden and thought was rife, and that a blinding flash, a thrust, a knife would sweep the hedge away and make all plain, brilliant beyond all words, blinding the brain. So the night passed, but then no morning broke only a something showed that night was dead. A sea bird, cackling like a devil, spoke, and the fog drew away and hung like lead. Like mighty cliffs it shaped, sullen and red. Like glowering gods at watch it did appear, and sometimes drew away, and then drew near. Like islands, and like chasms, and like hell, but always mighty and red, gloomy and ruddy, shutting the visible sea in like a well. Slow heaving in vast ripples, blank and muddy, where the sun should have risen it streaked bloody. The day was stillborn. All the sea fowls scattering splashed the still water, mewing, hovering, clattering. Then polar snow came down little and light, till all the sky was hidden by the small, most multitudinous drift of dirty white tumbling and wavering down and covering all, covering the sky, the sea, the clipper tall, furring the ropes with white, casing the mast, coming on no known air, but blowing past. And all the air seemed full of gradual moan, as though in those cloud chasms the horns were blowing the mort for gods cast out and overthrown or for the eyeless sun plucked out and going. Slow the low gradual moan came in the snowing. The Dalbra felt the prelude had begun. The snowstorm fluttered by. He saw the sun show and pass by, gleam from one towering prison into another, vister and more grim, which in dull cracks of darkness had arisen to muffle to a final door on him. The gods upon the dull crags lowered him, the pigeons chattered, quarreling in the track. In the southwest the dimness dulled to black. Then came the cry of unquo. Call all hands on deck. The Dalber knew its meaning. It was come, Cape Horn, that tramples beauty into wreck, and crumples steel and smites the strong man dumb. Down clattered flying kites and stay sails, some sang out in quick, high calls, the fair leads skirled, and from the southwest came the end of the world. Amperson quo. Caught in her bold dress, Amperson quo. Said the bosun. Hauling. Amperson quo. Lie, lie. Amperson quo. Quick, hi, come the men's call. It was all wallop of sails and startled calling. Amperson quo. Let fly. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Let got and quo. Amperson quo. Clue up. Amperson quo. And and quo. Let go all and quo. Amperson quo. Now up and make them fast. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Here, give us a haul and quo. Amperson quo. Now up and stow them. Quick. By God. We're done. Amperson quo. 
the blackness crunched all memory of the sun. Amperson quo. Up. Amperson quo. Said the mate. Amperson quo. Mise and top gallants. Hurry. The dauber ran, the others ran, the sails slatted and shook. Out of the black a flurry world in fine lines, tattering the edge to trails. Painting and art and England were old tales old and some other life to that pale man, who struggled with white fear and gulped and ran. He struck a ring bolt in his haste and fell, rose, sick with pain, half limbed in his left knee. He reached the shrouds where clambering men pell-mell hustled each other up and cursed him. He hurried aloft with them, then from the sea came a cold, sudden breath that made the hair stiff on the neck, as though death whispered there. A man below him punched him in the side. Amperson quo. Get up, you dauber, or let me get past. Amperson quo. He saw the belly of the skisail skied, gulped, and clutched tight, and tried to go more fast. Sometimes he missed his rat line and was grossed, scraped his shin raw against the rigid line dine. The clamberers reached the feudic shrouds incline. Cursing they came. One, kicking out behind, kicked dauber in the mouth, and one below punched at his calves. The feudic shrouds inclined it was a perilous path for one to go. Amperson quo. Up, dauber, up. A curse followed a blow. He reached the top and gasped, then on, then on. And one voice yelled and quo. Let go. Amperson quo. And one and quo. All gone. Amperson quo. Fierce clamberers, some in oil skins, some in rags, hustling and hurrying up up the steep stairs. Before the windless sails were blown to flags, and whirled like dirty birds with want great airs, ten men in all, to get this mast of theirs snug to the gale in time. Amperson quo. Up. Damn you, run. Amperson quo. The mizen top head was safely won. Amperson quo. Lay out. Amperson quo. The bosun yelled. The dauber laid out on the yard gripping the yard and feeling sick at the mighty space of air displayed below his feet, where mewing birds were wheeling. A giddy fear was on him. B was reeling. He bit his lip half through, clutching the jack. A cold sweat glued the shirt upon his back. The yard was shaking, for a brace was loose. He felt that he would fall. He clutched, he bent, clammy with natural terror to the shoes while idiotic promptings came and went. Snow fluttered on a wind flaw and was spent. He saw the water darken. Someone yelled, Amperson quo. Frap it. Don't stay to fry. Hold on. Amperson quo. He held. Darkness came down half darkness in a whirl. The sky went out, the waters disappeared. He felt a shocking pressure of blowing hurled the ship upon her side. The darkness speared at her with wind. She staggered. She careered, then down she lay. The dauber felt her go. He saw his yard tilt downwards. Then the snow whirled all about dense, multitudinous, cold, mixed with the wind's one devilish thrust and shriek, which whiffled out men's tears, deafened, took hold, flattening the flying drift against the cheek. The yards buckled and bend, man could not speak. The ship lay on her broadside. The wind's sound had devilish malice at having got her down how long the gale had blown he could not tell, only the world bad changed, his life had died. A moment now was everlasting hell. Nature in onslaught from the weather side, a withering rush of death, a frost that cried, shrieked, till he withered at the heart. A hail plastered his oilskins with an icy mail. Amperson quo. Cut. Amperson quo. Yelled his mate. He looked the sail was gone, blown into rags in the first furious squall. The tatters drummed the devil's tattoo. On the buckling yard a block thumped like a maul. The ship lay, the sea smote her, the wind's ball came, Amperson quo. Lou, Lou, Lou. Amperson quo. The devil cried his hounds on to the poor spent stag straight in his bounds. Amperson quo. Cut. Ease her. Amperson quo yelled his mate. The dauber heard. His mate wormed up the tilted yard and slashed, a rag of canvas skimmed like a darting bird. The snow whirled, the ship bowed to it, the gear lashed, 
the sea tops were cut off and flung down smashed. Tatters of shafts were flung, the rags of yells, and clang, 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 below beat the two bells. Amperson quo. Oh God. Amperson quo. The Dalber moaned. A roaring rang, blasting the royals like a cannonade. The backstays parted with a crackling clang, the upper spars were snapped like twigs decayed, snapped at their heels, their jagged splinters splayed, like white and ghastly hairs erect with fear. The mate yelled, Amperson quo. Gone, by God, and pitched them clear. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Up. Amperson quo. Yelled the bosun. Amperson quo. Up and clear the wreck. Amperson quo. The Dalber followed where he led, below he caught one giddy glimpsing of the deck filled with white water, as though heaped with snow. He saw the streamers of the rigging blow straight out like pennons from the splintered mast, then, all sense dimmed, all was an icy blast roaring from nether hell and filled with ice, roaring and crashing on the jerking stage, an utter bridle given to utter vice, limitless power mad with endless rage withering the soul. A minute seemed an age. He clutched and hacked at ropes, at rags of sail, thinking that comfort was a fairy tale. Told long ago long, long ago, long since heard of in other lives imagined, dreamed, there where the basest beggar was a prince to him in torment where the tempest screamed, comfort and warmth and ease no longer seemed things that a man could know, soul, body, brain, knew nothing but the wind, the cold, the pain. Amperson quo. Leave that. Amperson quo. The bosun shouted. Amperson quo. Krojic safe. Amperson quo. The splitting Krojic, not yet gone to rags, thundered below, beating till something gave, bellying between its bunt lines into bags. Some birds were blown past, shrieking, dark, like shags, their backs seemed, looking down. Amperson quo. Lou, Lou. Amperson quo. They cried. The ship lay, the seas thumbed her. She had died. They reached the Krojic yard, which buckled, buckled like a thin whalebone to the topsail's strain. They laid upon the yard and heaved and knuckled, pounding the sail, which jangled and leapt again. It was quite hard with ice, its rope like chain, its strength like seven devils. It shook the mast. They cursed and toiled and froze, a long time passed. Two hours passed, then a dim lightning came. Those frozen ones upon the yard could see the mainsail and the foresail still the same, still battling with the hands and blowing free, rags tattered where the staysails used to be. The lower topsails stood. The ship's lee deck seethed with four feet of water filled with wreck. An hour more went by. The Dalber lost all sense of hands and feet, all sense of all but of a wind that cut him to the ghost and of a frozen fold he had to haul, of heavens that fell and never ceased to fall, and ran in smoky snatches along the sea, leaping from crest to wave crest, yelling. He lost sense of time. No bells went, but he felt ages go over him. At last, at last they frapped the curringled Krojic's icy pelt. In frozen bulge and bun they made it fast. Then, scarcely live, they laid into the mast. The captain's speaking trumpet gave a blare, Amperson quo. Make fast the top sail, mister, while you're there. Some seamen cursed, but up they had to go up to the top sail yard to spend an hour stowing a top sail in a blinding snow, which made the strongest man among them cower. More men came up, the fresh hands gave them power, they stowed the sail. Then with a rattle of chain one half the Krojic burst its sponts again. They stowed the sail frapping it round with rope, leaving no surface for the wind, no fold, then down the weather shrouds, half dead, they grope. That struggle with the sail had made them old. He wondered if the Krojic furl would hold. Amperson quo. Lucky, Amperson quo. Said one, Amperson quo. It didn't spring this par. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Lucky. Amperson quo. The bosun said, Amperson quo. Lucky. We are. Amperson quo. She came within two shakes of turning top or stripping all her shroud screws, that first quiff. Amperson quo. 
now fish those wash deck buckets out of the slop. Here's Dauber says he doesn't like Cape Stiff. This isn't wind, man, this is only a whiff. Hold on, all hands, hold on. Amperson quo. A sea, half seen, paused, mounted, burst, and filled the main deck green. The Dauber felt a mountain of waterfall. It covered him deep, deep, he felt it fill, over his head, the deck, the five rails, all, quieting the ship, she trembled and lay still. Then with a rush and shatter and clanging shrill over she went. He saw the water cream over the bits. He saw the half-deck stream. Then in the rush he swirled, over she went. Her lyrail dipped, he struck, and something gave. His legs went to a port as the roll spent. She paused, then rolled and back the water drave. He drifted with it as a part of the wave, drowning, half stunned, exhausted, partly frozen, he struck the booby hatchway. Then the bosun leapt, seeing his chance, before the next sea burst, and caught him as fire drifted, seized him, held, upended him against the bits, and cursed. Amperson quo. This ain't the George's swimming baths, Amperson quo. Lie yelled. Amperson quo. Keep on your feet. Amperson quo. Another gray back felled the two together, and the bows, half blind, spat. Amperson quo. One's a joke. Amperson quo. Lie cursed. Amperson quo. But two's unkind. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Now, damn it, Dauber. Amperson quo. Said the mate. Amperson quo. Look out, or you'll be over the side. Amperson quo. The water freed. Each clanging freeing port became a spout. The men cleared tip the decks as there was need. The Dauber's head was cut, he felt a bleed into his oil skins as he clutched and coiled. Water and sky were devil sprues which boiled, boiled, shrieked, and glowered, but the ship was saved. Snugged safely down, though fourteen sails were split. Out of the dark a fierce her fury raved. The graybacks died and mounted, each crest lit with the white toppling gleam that hissed from it and slid, or leapt, or ran with whirls of cloud, mad with inhuman life that shrieked aloud. The watch was called. Dauber might go below. Amperson quo. Splice the main brace. Amperson quo. The maid called. All laid off to get a gulp of momentary glow as some reward for having saved the craft. The steward ladled mugs, from which each quaffed whiskey, with water, sugar, and lime, juice hot, a quarter of a pint each made the tot. Beside the lamp room door the stew stood ladling it out, and each man came in turn, tipped his sou'wester, drank it, grunted and quo. Good. And shambled forward, letting it slowly burn, when all were gone the dauber lagged astern, torn by his frozen body's lust for heat, the liquor's pleasant smell so warm so sweet, and by a promise long since made at home never to taste strong liquor. Now he knew the worth of liquor. Now I wanted some. His frozen body urged him to the brew. Yet it seemed wrong, an evil thing to do to break that promise. Amperson quo. Dauber, Amperson quo. Said the mate, Amperson quo. Drink, and turn in, man. Why the hell do you wait? Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Please, sir, I'm temperance. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Temperance are you, hey? That's all the more for me. So you were for slopes. I thought you'd had enough slopes for today. Go to your bunk and ease her when she drops. And ah, uh, steward? You brew with too much hops. Stir up the sugar, man. And tell your girl how kind the mate was teaching you to furl. Amperson quo. Then the mate drank the remnants, six men's share and rammed into his cabin, where he stripped and danced and clad, and was uproarious there. In waltzes with the cabin cat he tripped. Singing and tenor clear that he was pipped, that and quo. He who strove the tempest to disarm, must never first embrail the lee yard arm. Amperson quo. And that his name was Ginger. Dauber crept back to the roundhouse, gripping by the rail. The wind howled by. The passionate water leapt. The night was all one roaring with a gale. Then at the door he stopped, uttering a wail. 
his hands were perished numb and blue as veins, he could not turn the knob for both the spains. A hand came shuffling aft, dodging the seas, singing in quo, her nut-brown hair and quo, between his teeth, taking the oceans to melt at his case even when the wash about his thighs did seethe. His soul was happy in its happy sheath. Ampers and quo. What, Dauber, won't it open? Fingers cold? You'll talk of this time, Dauber, when you rolled. Ampers and quo. He flung the door half open, and a sea washed them both in, over the splashboard, down. Ampers and quo. You silly, salt miscarriage. Ampers and quo. Sputtered he. Ampers and quo. Dauber. Pull out the plug before we drown. That's spoil my laces and my velvet gown. Where is the plug? Ampers and quo. Groping in pitch dark water, he sang between his teeth and quo. The farmer's daughter. Ampers and quo. It was pitch dark within there. At each roll the chest slid to the slant. The water rushed, making full many a clanging tin pan bowl into the black billow bunks as it gushed. The dog tired men slept through it. They were hushed. The water drained, and then with matches damp the man struck heads off till he lit the lamp. Ampers and quo. Thank you, Ampers and quo. The Dalber said. The seaman grinned. Ampers and quo. This is your first foul weather? Ampers and quo. Ampers and quo. Yes, Ampers and quo. Ampers and quo. I thought up on the yard you hadn't seen much wind. Them's rotten sea boots, Dauber, that you brought. Now I must cut on deck before I'm caught. Ampers and quo. He went. The lamp flames smoked. He slammed the door. A film of water loitered across the floor. The Dauber watched it come and watched it go. He had had revelation of the lies cloaking the truth men never choose to know. He could bear witness now and cleanse their eyes. He had beheld in suffering. He was wise. This was the sea, this searcher of the soul, this never-dying shriek fresh from the pole. He shook with cold. His hands could not undo his oilskin buttons, so he shook and sat, watching his dirty fingers, dirty blue, hearing without the hammering tackle slat, within, the drops from dripping clothes went pat, running in little patters, gentle, sweet, and in quo. I, I, ampers and quo, went the wind and the seas beat. His bunk was sopping wet. He clambered in, none of his clothes wear.